What's the word, ladies and gentlemen? So, today we're doing another reaction, but it's not to a video. It's not of a compilation of highlights and so on. It's to an article. Now, I've done this on my main channel a few times, and y'all seem to love it there. But I think it's more of a reaction thing over anything. So, today's article is from Bleach Report, ranking every NBA team's top three offseason trade targets. And the reason why this is cool to me is because my team, my Chicago Bulls, is uh, we're thinking about the offseason, man. This year is over for us. A lot of y'all are going to the bubble. We aren't. So I got to start thinking about the offseason. So ranking every team's top three offseason targets. All right, let's get into it. Starting off with the Atlanta Hawks. They have Brandon Ingram, Spencer Dinwiddie, and Aaron Holiday. Understand the Brandon Ingram 100%. A sign and trade would be interesting. But I don't see a world where the Pelicans are willing to get rid of Brandon Ingram. Maybe I'm out of the loop on something. But I do think that he fits pretty well with what they're trying to build, right? I mean, right now, they're, they're heading on to the bubble. They have a good potential to end up taking an eighth seed after the schedule was released. And Brandon Nagel was an all-star this year. There's no way. Unless you're getting back some crazy, crazy assets, which is like, you don't trade your all-star small forward who's only, what, 23, 24? Sign and trade. I, I have to read why they think that the Pelicans was sign and trade. The Hawks are... Rare for having money to spend and rare for being a rebuilding club that already unearthed a star. Trey Young, they should aggressively attack the market. So I understand doing like offering him something because he is a restricted free agent. But again, I think the Pelicans are going to match anything that people out there throw. The Hawks literally lose by tying up max spot. Either the Pelicans will almost certainly match. So yes, sure, they should throw an offer at him. But again, the Pelicans will also match. Spencer Dinwiddie is such a nice combo guard that can run basically one through three. I can understand him being a target for them because, I mean, he's a player that is good. And the Atlanta Hawks need that. They're a young team with nice young talent, but they also need somebody that can help them right now. Like Trey Young, I don't know if he's officially said it, but he wants to win games, you know. And Aaron Holiday is a good backup point guard because he defends and everything. So I understand those three. Next, the Boston Celtics... Joel Embiid, John Collins, and Patty Mills. So if they're talking about these top two, John Collins and Joel Embiid, that has to do with uh, making a big-time trade. What in the world? If Philly dramatically shakes things up, Embiid could be squeezed out. They might connect on a missing piece to a championship puzzle. Um, Might cost them Jalen Brown, but it could get them a top 10 player in the league. Philly fans, not Philly, both Philly fan and Celtics fans. How would y'all feel about this? I know y'all got this own heated rivalry going in between y'all. So how would you feel if Joel Embiid was traded to the Celtics and Brandon? I'm not Brandon. Jeez, I'm thinking about Brandon. Um, Brandon Ingram, and Jalen Brown was traded to the. Again, this is very hypothetical. They would have to basically depend on how this this bubble works if Philly just gets destroyed in the first round or something. That's the only way I see them trading Joel Embiid, and even then. There's excuses for them getting eliminated in the first round, right? Boys, they play basketball the four. Anyway, John Collins would be a similar situation where they would have to make a trade for him. And Patty Mills, sure. Brooklyn Nets is an interesting team. Bradley Bill, Victor Oladipo, Rudy Gobert, and all of those are trade targets. Dealing with, like, Karis LeVert. Dealing with one of the, I would guess, Jared, Jared Allen because DeAndre Jordan is close friends with uh, Kyrie and Kevin Durant. So they're not trading him away. So it would have to do with formulating a trade package for all three of these guys. But it has been rumors for having Bradley Beal for sure. Victor Depot is an interesting one because they'd be taking a flyer on a guy who hasn't looked 100% in like a year or so. Uh, mostly because he's not 100%, right? And Rudy Gobert, and that is contingent on like... How the Jazz de depend on what they want to do, right? With the whole coronavirus and then Donovan Mitchell being pretty upset about catching it from Rudy Gobert. But they said that was nothing. But also something that's interesting with Rudy Gobert is that he's up for a max extension. And not just a max, a super max extension. And the Utah Jazz are going to have to figure out, hey, as good of a player Rudy Gobert is, is he worth the super max? They have to figure that out. Um, but Rudy Gobert added to that team defensively would be ridiculous. All these players added to this team would be ridiculous because it puts them in a, a legit big three, a legit big three situation. Next team, the Charlotte Hornets. And they're just trying, they're trying to get any type of assets, restrict the free agency, sign the trades. Makes sense. I'm not going to go too deep into the Charlotte Hornets. They're rebuilding team. Um, they have some good assets in Vontae Graham and PJ Washington. They probably want to build around. Um, I do think Christian Wood would be such a nice pickup for them. I really do, but I don't see the Detroit Pistons letting Christian Wood go because Christian Wood had a very, very good second half of the season. Next team, 
Chicago Bulls, Drew Holiday, Josh Richardson, and Mo Bamba. I read an article recently where this, the same author, author of this article was saying that Zach Levine can get traded for Terrence Ross and Mo Bamba. No, 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 I like Mo. But, bro, what? Drew Holiday would be tough, though. Drew Holiday would be tough. But then that's also a trade situation. If Drew Holiday yeah, is too rich, Chicago, what do they... Wait, Chicago could take a long look at Holiday, who can play the one, both, or neither of... Z next, 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 next. The Cleveland Cavaliers, acquired draft picks, 100%. You got Kevin Love, you have Larry Nance. They have players that can get you late first-round picks, early seconds, get draft picks. Nazir Little, I, I don't think the Blazers would give up on him. The Blazers, I think they really do like him. And Troy Brown Jr., cool. Next team, the Dallas Mavericks. Can you imagine them picking up any of these options? Again, it would be a trade scenario, which would be interesting because they did throw in so many picks to get Porzingis. I don't even know what type of assets they'd have to give up to get one of these three players. I mean, you'd have to do, throw Tim Hardaway Jr. in for the money aspect. But, like, what what else do they have to offer? Because, again, thanks to the, what is it, stifling where you can't throw back-to-back -back years of picks. And what did they throw? Three first round of their own picks and, like, two picks from, like, the Miami Heat. So it's like, I don't know how they make these deals happen. I would love to see it, get another powerhouse in the NBA, but I just don't know if that's really feasible. Next team. Yes, I've, I've been saying Drew Holiday on the Nuggets for a long time because him him and Gary Harris are similar players as far as them being elite defenders. But Drew Holiday is just so much better on the offensive side of the ball than Gary Harris. Um, so I could see a straight-up flip. I could see a straight-up flip if the Pelicans are like, you know, we want to get younger. We have a player that we think can be similar to Drew Holiday, except for Gary Harris is not an on-ball player like Drew Holiday, like a, he can run point guard. Either way, we want to get a little bit younger, so we'll get this guy who had, who's had – had great seasons. Like a couple years ago, he was averaging 18 points per game. This year, he's averaging 10. So he, he's just his offensive game has went somewhere, and maybe the Pelicans feel like they can bring it out. So let's trade our old vet for the younger version of him, and then the Denver Nuggets look so much better. But T. Steibel, I don't think Philly's trading him away. And Alfred Camino does make sense, but he got a big time baggy for his standards. Uh, Detroit draft picks: John Collins and Dennis Smith Jr. 100% agree with number one and number three. John Collins' name has been on a lot of different stuff. I just don't see a world where the Atlanta Hawks are like just willingly trading him away. I do think Trey Young and him are a nice duo, and I think they love playing together. So it would just be really weird for them to up and trade him away after just a few seasons of his NBA career, especially considering he has been very, very good, especially this year. Next, the Warriors. Cut it out. I know it's a possibility, y'all, but I hate to see stuff like this. I hate to see it. What are y'all whispering about? Oh, brother. It's just like when LeBron was whispering to Lonzo, and then later that year or the next season, LeBron was playing for the Lakers with Lonzo. I don't want to see it happen, so I'm going to skip it. Um, <laughs> John Collins would fit what the Warriors do. Same thing with Miles Turner because he defends the paint, but he also adds a different aspect that the Warriors team hasn't had, and that's a stretch five. Next team. The Rockets, similar situation. If, they, if the Rockets are going to go big again, they need a guy that can shoot the three ball, and Miles Turner would be that. I don't know LaMarcus Aldridge or how he would fit in the way that the Houston Rockets run basketball. Uh, but Doug McDermott, a shooter, sure. I just I want to see what they say. LaMarcus is older, more expensive alternative, isn't quite as comfortable bidding his time on the perimeter. So, yeah, why would you even consider that? Next team will be the Indiana Pacers. Gordon Hayward feels like a Pacers type player. I don't know why. Please tell me if I'm tripping. Karis LeVert, Harrison Barnes, and that would have to do with trading Miles Turner in any of these situations because the Celtics need a center. Um, I guess the Nets don't need another center. They already got two, and Harrison Barnes, and then they could use in the ah ah. I could. This is why they put them in a picture together because in this hypothetical situation, they're traded for each other. Next, the Clippers. Cal. No way. Imagine they team back up. They get another rig together, but in a different city. Cal Lowry, Stephen Adams, Andre Drummond. Um, that's one of the big things about the Clippers is their center rotation. Of course, you trust Montrez Harrell, but even him being a 6'7 center, he's going to have trouble defending some of the better centers in the league. Stephen Adams does that well. And all of the flack I give Drummond, he is a, he is at least an, a slightly above average defender. So that those make sense. But again, trading scenarios would be kind of iffy. 
Lakers, Spencer Dinwiddie, Buddy Hill, Derrick Rose. I'm glad they didn't give the Lakers anything like too catastrophic, like Bradley Beal. Uh, we want you to get CJ McCollum because those aren't really realistic. But Spencer Dinwiddie's realistic. Derrick Rose is 100% realistic. We had rumors about that when the trade deadline popped up. It was like Derrick Rose for a first round pick and Cal Kuzma. I like all of these assets for them. 100% would help them out. I would love to see Derrick Rose end up there because a higher chance of winning a championship than him in Detroit. But the Pistons, their owner said that they believe that Blake Griffin and Derrick Rose are there for the future. So I don't know what the heck they're doing. Next, Memphis Grizzlies, Laurie Marketing, Kevin Herter, and Cal Kuzma. Marketing will be perfect providing he's available. He's been poorly unhappy with the Bulls, yada, yada. And that had to do... The way he was saying is that, hey, if there's not changes in the front office, then I, I don't want to be here. But we made changes in the front office, so I'm guessing he's here to stay. Um, but anything can happen in the NBA. I don't know what I would want from them to trade Larry Market in a way. But um, he, he would fit what they're doing as far as the Memphis Grizzlies go. So, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Kevin Herter, too, added more floor space in the Cal Kuzma, similar to, like, Larry Market. And so, like, far as a four that can stretch the floor. Next team, Miami Heat. Giannis, Joel B, Bradley, Bill. Okay, so we talking big time trades. Um, Atacumpo has a friendship with and the same age and his Bam Adebayo. Embiid considers Butler a brother and Bill has a deep respect for the franchise. So in this situation, all of those young assets that the Miami Heat have are going out the window for a chance at one of these three stars. And if I'm a Miami Heat fan, I'm cool with that because if you add Giannis to your roster, your championship contender, if you add Joel Embiid to your roster, your chance, so on and so forth, you know? And you would still hypothetically keep Bam in some of these trades? I don't know if you're trading for Giannis and keeping Bam, though. You know what I'm saying? If I'm the Bucks and I have to trade Giannis because he has notified me that he won't resign, I want Bam in that trade. I want Bam in that trade. Next, the Bucks, Chris Paul. Another team that was rumored uh, for Chris Paul this trade deadline, but they were doing so well. They are like, we're going to keep Chris Paul for the remainder of the season. Um, he would definitely add another aspect to the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, some leadership, even though it don't seem like they lack leadership right now. Just an upgrade at point guard from from um, Eric Bledsoe. Future first round picks. All right. Next team is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Another player that's always been rumored to end up there, and that is Aaron Gordon. Otto Porter Jr. Interesting, interesting. What do y'all? What would you give us for Otto Porter? Because hey. I'm telling you, he is available. <laughs> he is available. I don't know what the heck they'd give us, but these are good offers. I don't know if Frank Nielakina, that's a Frank Nielakina doesn't even change the scenery. I say that. But um, they already have Josh Akogi, who's an above average defender that can defend one through threes. Can you imagine a lineup of Frank Nielakina, Josh Akogi? How, how are you scoring the ball? How? But I can understand one of three and D players when you have D'Angelo Russell and Car Anthony Towns. Next team is the Pelicans. Similar situation. Now we're just getting kind of back and forth here. Miles Turner. Um, I was hoping that they would make a deal for him uh, before the season even started. Because with Zion, you don't want a big that's going to clog up the paint. So Miles Turner helps there. Same thing with Larry Marketing. And Duncan Robinson obviously adds some more floor spacing. New York Knicks. If I'm the Knicks, I'm like, give me anything. Any asset, I'll take. John Collins, Jared Cover, and Anthony Simons. All players that they would be willing to take a flyer on. Again, I don't know a situation where the Atlanta Hawks are trading John Collins to the Knicks. Like, what do the Knicks have? Are they trading them for a top five pick or something? I don't really know. Next team, OKC. Draft picks, Mikael Bridges and Dennis Smith Jr. Sure, OKC. Keep piling on the draft picks, baby. Next team, Orlando Magic. Zach Levine, Karis LeVert, Blake Griffin. You want to take on that Blake Griffin contract? Because I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, but again, this is the same guy that said that Zach Levine is going to get traded for, or could get traded for Terrence Ross and Mobamba. Can't see it happening. Can't see it happening. Next team, Philly. Get, yeah, Drew Holiday, Buddy Hill, Chris Paul. All add a different element to the team. Um, they knew they need shot creation and all these guys can do that. All these guys can do that. Next team, Philly. Larry Market is just on everybody's list. Who would they give us? What they give us like? Mikael Bridges and something? I don't even know. I don't even know. Average the fourth fewest fans this season. But Larry Marketer is from Arizona. I love Larry Marketer. And I know he went to Arizona. But I promise you, if the Suns trade for Larry Marketer, that's not going to bring fans to come watch him because he went to Arizona. Right? Or am I tripping? Or Arizona fans just that crazy. They're like, you know what? Larry Marketer's here. 
You can, we'll take this guy if y'all want this guy. Deal? Okay, deal. Next team. Portland Trail Blazers. Let's get wild. Yes, you are. Uh, sure, the Blazers can focus on another round of marginal upgrades. No one, yada, 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 yada. Yet, cut a ties with CJ McCollum so that the deal that they're thinking about has been since the CJ McCollum and other prospects and draft picks. Philly, what's up, bro? I wouldn't accept this deal, personally, if I'm Philly, because Ben Simmons is so good. You know what I'm saying? He's so good. Kings, Michael Porter Jr. is safe. They said that the trade deadline. So I don't even know why you're throwing him anything. They said there's only, only a few players in our roster that are untouchable, and Michael Porter Jr. was one of them. But they also have Cal Kuzma and then Jared Allen. The Spurs, get draft pick Spurs. I'm sorry, this, might, this is the time to hit your rebuild. It's going to be the first year in 20-plus years where you don't make the playoffs, probably because you don't have LaMarcus. Um, and you're pretty far behind anyway. So get your draft picks. Grow with your young players. DeJounte Murray, one of the best young players in the league, if you ask me. I think his future is super bright. So just keep getting younger. And um, I know that don't sound good to pop. Then we have the Toronto Raptors. Sure, go out there. Try to make that deal. I don't know what you throw in. OG. I don't even know. What the heck do you throw in? Um, well, they respect the yada, 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 yada. Okay, whatever. Utah Jazz. Nemanja Bielitsa, Kevin Love, Zach Collins, Ab Floor Spacing. Cool. All of these guys do exactly that. Some better than others. But yeah, okay. Next team. The last team. Watch the Wizards. Tyler Hero, Michael Porter Jr., Julius Randle. In this situation, are you trading John Wall? Before even entertaining the idea of how 30 year old John Wall looks coming off an Achilles tear, there just hasn't been much success between the two. So they're saying, hey, let's split that up. Interesting article, man. Interesting, interesting article. I agree with some things, a lot of things I did not. But I always love to see different point of views and, and read up on what other people believe. Leave a like on the video, man. I'll be back. Peace.